starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, guys. I want to welcome you to another KevCam night class here. Um, tonight, I've got Mr. Brendan McKenna helping out with uh, any questions or concerns or anything that pops up along the way. Yeah, absolutely. How's, uh, how's everything going? Good. Are you surviving from uh, IMTS? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Getting back into the swing of things here. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was it was good, but definitely good. But yeah, I'll be here to um, you know, like um, you know, Kevin said, I'll be here to answer any questions. And uh, also, uh, Kevin, I'm sure you're probably going to explain this, but I'll monitor the the questions area for you. And and uh, if any questions come up, we'll we'll address those then. Yeah, perfect. Um, so with the um, with the uh, the go to webinar, um, there is a questions panel, or it looks like a little hand uh, to raise. Right there is where you guys can go ahead and write your questions in there. Um, now, if you guys want, right now, you guys are all in listen only mode. Um, that's just to eliminate some of the background noise that's uh, that happens. So, um, definitely type your questions in. Uh, to Brendan, and uh, if there's something that needs to be addressed instantly, he'll tell me to shut up and let's we got a question, or he'll answer them himself. So, um, with that, uh, with saying that, um, we'll get into the uh, night class here. We're going to be covering HSS Express tonight. Um, there's a lot in here. I was actually going to do a full HSS tonight, but um, since we're going to kind of go through each individual package, I want to kind of break it down. So we'll go over the Express first, and then we'll go over to the full HSS. And to, to be honest with you guys, I don't know if we can fit a full HSS in an hour long, but uh, um, we'll, once we get to that point, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll tackle her. But um, for those of you guys that are new, um, <clears throat> if you guys have a topic that you want covered or um, you want to see a KevCam night class done on a specific topic, definitely send those over to me in email. and. Uh, if your uh, your topic is chosen for that week, uh, we'll send you some solid cam swag, nice uh, solid cam hat and uh, t-shirts. So, actually, Mr. Do we have Clarence Wilson in here? Yes, Clarence, you are uh, the winner for last week's. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll get that information off to headquarters, and we'll get you some solid cam swag headed your way. So. Um, and thanks again for the ideas too. So, and those of you guys that don't have my email address, let me uh, put it into the GoToMeeting chat, and everybody should be able to see my email address. So, um, like I said, submit those ideas over to me. Um, if you guys have any questions with the software or anything that we covered, um, and it's you know after hours, definitely shoot me an email, um, and we'll get you squared away. One other thing I wanted to do too is I'm going to put the um, the YouTube link into the chat also. So you guys should be able to click on that hyperlink in there and it's gonna bring you right to the SolidCam University channel uh, where we have all the previous recordings in there. Um, I also have quick tips and tricks in there. Um, some are real short, some are a uh, little bit longer. So kind of going over a fixture, you know, minute 40 here, but we got tons of videos in here going over everything inside SolidCam. So if there is a, a KevCam night class that you missed out on maybe a month ago um, when we did the user choice, you can come over here, click on it. Um, but definitely come to the channel, uh, hit the subscribe button so you can get the, all the latest videos that we put up there. And every night class is recorded for you guys, so uh, it will be on there. And I'm also starting to include parts to go along with it. Um, the one from last week from the 3D million, I'm still uploading. We're trying to get uploaded to a box so you guys can have that link so you can have full access to everything in there. So, <clears throat> But with that being said, let's get the ball rolling here. So what we're doing is uh, going to be covering HSS Express. So basically, all of you guys that are in here all have HSS Express. Um, it comes with every package that we have, and it's basically um, it's basically a teaser of uh, of what you guys can do with HSS. Um, to give you a good explanation of what HSS does is it stands for high speed surfacing, but it's more uh, driven towards a 3D surface. 
And we have two different packages. Um, you can get HSS or HSM. And the, the way I like to say it is HSS is just for working on specific areas where HSM kind of lays a blanket over everything and, um, and, and, and we'll get everything covered up for you. So um, like I said, we're going to be covering HSS. So um, you'll just see we have a 2.5D part. Um, I've already programmed everything in here uh, with our vices, fixtures, and all that stuff. And um, if you guys have questions with the, uh, the fixturing or anything like that, just let me know, and uh, I can point you towards the, one of the other videos we did. But what we're actually going to be focusing on is this 3D surface coming around here. Now, granted, if you guys had a uh, radius cutter, we could definitely do this with the uh, radius cutter and just using a profile, but it's an oddball size. So um, either A, we'd have to get a custom ground one, which is expensive, or B, we can come at it with a 3D uh, milling path. So, But with that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an add milling. And what I've done is I've actually limited my license for you guys to see, so um, down to a 2.5D standard. Um, so I won't be able to show you guys full functionality of HSS. I'm only going to be able to show you guys the functionality that you guys are currently seeing if you guys just have HSS Express. So um, <clears throat> so first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and basically the first page, don't have to touch anything. Second page is the geometry. What do you want to cut? So we can click on the new piece of paper, and I can just come click on these surfaces as I'm going around. So I've got my surfaces that I want. Now, there is a ton of options inside HSS. Uh, we have area types. Um, we can do uh, full to avoid exact edges, uh, full start um, at exact edge or surface edges, uh, limit cuts by one or two points. Now, if you guys have the full uh, package you actually will get more options in here so there's a lot going on here so um, you'll see over here in the lower left my toolpath is actually updating so if I do see how my it kind of stays away a little bit on there now if we go to the full start and end it will actually move right up to the edge so but the nice thing is what we've done is when you guys start a new HSS operation, a lot of the um, options at default are already set up for you guys. So it kind of takes the guesswork out, but it's just coming in here and maybe just fine tuning your toolpath. Um, for those of you guys that work on more 3D parts, uh, you know, more commonly, you got you know that it all depends on surface, zebra lines of the SOLIDWORKS model, how the model was created. So it does take some finessing a little bit um, with the, when you're doing 3D, and it doesn't matter uh, what you're using. So Now, if you guys wanted to limit it just to maybe a specific area of that 3D surface, so if we have a really big 3D surface and you just want to focus on a certain area, you guys can actually draw a 2D boundary curve in there. Um, to uh, just contain it to that internal boundary. Now, drive surface offset. Um, kind of showing what, it, what it's saying right here. So if we need to offset that surface by, you know, a 10 thou and come back with a different cutter, this is where you want to offset that cutter uh, and move it up or down, um, whatever way that you want to go. All right, so let's get to our tool. I'm going to grab a quarter-inch ball and mill here. Levels, we really don't have to worry much about in here. Um, you'll notice that for those of you guys that are actually using four and five axis simultaneous, this is all set up the same way. You're just certain things are turned off in here. Um, so HSS is going to have uh, capabilities for the four and five axis also. So, um, But being since we're just working on a flat part, um, you can just leave it on plane. Um, like I said, a lot of times uh, you guys don't even have to touch this screen or the cord screen or the miscellaneous uh, parameters or the machine control. So it kind of narrows it down because I know there's a lot in here, um, but kind of narrows it down for you guys to just a specific area. So Now, toolpath parameters. This is where it's kind of like the technology page that I've been telling you guys about where all the, the good stuff is. Um, here's where you can set up your step over. So what I'm going to do is change this step over to 5,000. 
Now, when I change my maximum step over, you'll see I'm getting a scallop of we're at two millionths right there. So we're going to have a beautiful mirror finish. Now, if you guys are looking for a certain RA uh, finish, I mean, there here's where you can calculate, you know, your RA finish just by the scallop height. And for those of you guys that aren't sure on scallop height is basically the, from the top of the cusp down to the bottom of the cusp um, is your scallop height. So now, and I can make this as tight as I want, or I can make it as open as I want. Um, one thing I like to do is when you guys are just starting out fresh, leave this at uh, 50 thou right here and just do your saving calculate. That way, what you can do is you can actually get, here, let me just do a saving calculate. I'll actually be able to see my lines. So now if you get into a really complex part and you set your max step over to, you know, maybe one thou or maybe uh, five tenths, you're going to spend a lot of time calculating when, you know, let's get the, the lines looking how we want it first, and then we'll tighten up our, our step over. So um, when you do that saving calculate and simulate, you don't waste so much time you know, doing that calculation. So now the cut tolerance, um, you know, kind of basically showing, you know, what's kind of going on here. Um, like I said, a lot of this is already set up as default for you guys. So you, there's not a lot of stuff that you'd really have to change. But if you wanted to, um, you know, tighten up the tolerance, loosen up the tolerance, you kind of see what's going on down here in the bottom picture, kind of smoothing stuff out. Um, and I mean, we're taking this to the, the extreme here with this picture. So um, you're not going to see a bunch of mountain ranges in your uh, on your part. Uh, chaining tolerance is basically the chaining. Um, if you're working on a part, basically what it, on these surfaces, we kind of threw a chain on there. You're not going to see it, but um, we can actually tighten up that tolerance by here. And I wouldn't go anything smaller than 10 thou. Uh, there's really no need to. Um, it's going to take a little bit more time to calculate the tighter you get that. So Now, in the sorting, a couple different ways. Um, now, like I said, we are just doing HSS Express, so you're going to have less options uh, here for you guys. So you can do a zigzag or uh, one way, but um, if you guys had the full version, you'd have spiral. Um, you can change your cut direction, your uh, your machine by lanes. Um, there'd be another options down here for you guys. So, um, so this is like I said, it's kind of the teaser. Um, it, it can get the job done, and you might not have the most efficient tool path, um, but it will still get the job done with that uh, that express package. So, but let's get some uh, good tool path on here. So I'm going to go back to my surface quality, and I'm going to set it to five thou. Oops, one thou, five thou. And I'm just going to do save and calculate. So you'll see we're kind of working our way around here, just going back and forth. Now, every time it switches to a new, a, a new chain, it comes up to my clearance level. Well, you'll see I have a lot of red right here. So we're really kind of wasting a lot of rapid movement in there. So what I can actually do here is come over to my link section now. And your links are going to be all your retract moves. And if I come on the links tab right here, and I'm going to go to links between slices, and I'm going to do uh, the blend spline. Now, what that blend spline is going to do is it's basically when it comes from over here, you can follow my mouse around, it's going to do a little loop, staying down, and then go back into the material come back over here, stay in the material, or do a little loop, and then come back in the material. So if I just do save and calculate, look how much cleaner that tool path looks now. We're not wasting all those rapid movements. And now if I go ahead and zoom in here, ah, I got that tool in my way. You'll see that nice spline, uh, blend spline right there. So it, it's going to be a lot less jerky on your machine. Um, a lot of you guys might just switch this over to direct, and you'll see how we have these nice sharp corners here. 
we get a little bit of the jerkiness of the machine when it comes there. Um, if we're extending paths apart, it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, you know, if you want that machine to keep feeding through and just do a nice follow through, definitely switch it over to the blend spline. And like I said, guys, there's a ton of options in here. Um, so I'm going to try to cover these as much as possible. But if I forget something in here, let me know. Um, so your, your gaps long cuts is basically, um, you know, if you have multiple different areas, it's going to be the, the small gaps are going to be set to direct. The large gaps you can also change. Um, and this one, it really doesn't pertain to this part, and I'll, I'll get into it on other parts. But um, you have, well, not very many options here. Uh, you can do direct clearance area or incremental clearance area. Um, with the full HSS, you'll get basically all these up here and then some. Um, but maybe you want to do, maybe on your gaps long cuts, you want to do a lead in or a lead out. So if we want to do a lead in and lead out, doing an arc, we can do this blend spline right here, use lead in and lead out, hit the little button right here, and it's going to be defaulted to tangential arc. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, let's, uh, let me just make sure I got that, yep, same for lead in. And let's do the same calculate here. And you'll see now we're doing a large lead in swoop and then it does the blends, uh, blend spline over. So if you need that lead in and lead out for every single cut, this is where you turn your lead in and lead out on. Okay, let's get that set back here. All right. So we got a really nice looking tool path here. Um, now, if we want, we can do is we can extend, maybe we want to go just a little bit past. So we're going right to the exact edge right now, but maybe we just want to extend it past. So for that, what we want to do is click on our toolpath parameters, click on modify, and extend trim. And maybe I want to extend it 100% of the tool. Or if you guys want, you guys can also put values in there. And we can hit OK. And you'll see that it actually extended our toolpath out. Um, I know it's been a huge question, at least on the, on the support side of things of, let me kind of get this in picture here for you guys, is, you know, how can I extend my, my surface out? And uh, some of you guys, um, you can also take that surface and extend it out that way using SOLIDWORKS. But um, there, is, there is the option there for you guys with the HSS just to extend that out. So uh, real nice feature in there to get that. And there's also some, you know, rounding corners in here. Um, and like I was saying before, you know, with full HSS, you're actually going to get a lot more options in here too. So do we have any questions so far on this part? Let's just do a save and calculate and let's do a simulate to see what it looks like right now. And we'll play it through here. Well, I already see a problem that I don't like. I don't want it starting right in the middle and working its way down to a lighter cut. I want to start on a light cut and work its way up. So what I'm going to do here is just do a pause. Now, if I want to switch my cutting direction, we can go to our sorting and just click the little check box where it says flip step over. Save and calculate. And now, go to Solid Verify here. And now, I'm taking a nice light cut, working myself into the cut there. Just going back and forth. And speed it up here. And like I said, I set the tolerance, or the step over, pretty small in here. So we should have a real nice finish um, in there. So you see a nice, nice surface in there. Um, and I don't have my, my surface quality or my accuracy set real high right now. Um, so we're only at 5,000, so that's why we're kind of seeing some of a uh, little bit of uh, deviation or um, I can't think of the name of that, the uh, little home straight there right now. But um, Scallops? Is that what yeah, you're looking for? Yeah, the scallops <laughs> right, that are going on right there. Um, but if I tighten up my tolerance, those would go away. But you can see we've got a real nice finish in here. Um, so 
it, it gets the job done. And like I said, it's for this particular part, it's going to work. HSS Express is going to work great. Um, now, once we get into the more complex parts, we're going to see where HSS Express and HSS um, Standard, where it has its defaults. And I, I just want to kind of point those out to you guys so you guys kind of know going into some of these parts so you can kind of, you know, kind of see it and then what we can do to uh, uh, to, to fix that for you. So. Yeah, you know, and Kevin, if I can just kind of jump in here real quick, you, um, you know, yeah, it's it's just important to note that that you know the the express version of HSS um, is is really kind of just a uh, like Kevin said, it's a little bit of a teaser or somewhat of a, a kind of a watered down uh, version of of the standard express package. I mean, if you were doing you know if you're doing some more complex type surfaces, um, you know, surfaces that aren't necessarily like a ruled surface like this. Um, you know, more of like a, uh, you know, of a complex type surface, you know, that's really where you'd want to use your full HSS for that. Um, but, but this is kind of a really good example of, of the express version of HSS and what it can do. So, um, you know, there, there are differences. There are some pretty big differences, actually. And, um, you know, again, I think, uh, you know, this is a really good example of the express and, and what it can really do for you if you are using a standard version uh, of the software. So, um, but you know, if you want to see more with the uh, the full full version of HSS, you know, we can always um, you know you can always contact us and we can do a you know more personalized presentation for you on that. Absolutely. And make sure you tell them you want the Kev Cam special, right, Brendan? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we're getting into a little bit more of a uh, a little bit more of a complex 3D part. Um, this is one that kind of just drew up here, um, just kind of an odd shaped uh, for you guys. So um, that last one, let me uh, just start a new operation here. I kind of forgot to uh, jump over or show you guys this. So when you start up HSS, you're going to actually have. Um, and like I said, it doesn't matter what package you have, you're going to have a minimum of linear and constant Z. Now, like Ben was... And, hey, yep. Kevin, before before you start that, I just wanted to say um, th this might be a good time to talk about, you know, the constant Z because there was a question um, uh, that basically just says, can you, can you make it ramp down in Z instead of just stepping down? So maybe yeah. that's... This is a good time to talk about that? Or? Yeah, you, you bet. We'll actually cover it a little bit on, on this part right here. So... Um, okay. So yeah, we have our two different options right here. And like I said, if you have the full version, you'll have a whole slew of options in here. You'll have morph between boundary curves, morph between adjacent surfaces, uh, projection, there's a whole slew of them here. Um, but since we're just working with Express, I, I want to try to get this part done as, as best I can. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on linear. And I'm going to grab my geometry. So I want to work on that face right there. I want to cut everything on there. Now, grab a, my uh, tool. And I'm just going to be using a quarter inch ball nose end mill. And let's go to the tool path parameters here. And I'm going to set this, we'll just do a tenth off finish for right now. And now what I'm going to do here is Let's just do a save and calculate and see what we're looking at. Um, you'll see we're kind of going back and forth this way, uh, going, I don't know, in the, in the X direction. Um, so now what I want to do is, you'll see I got lots of retracts going up and down like that. Um, so let's go ahead and eliminate those right now. So what we'll do is we'll come to our link, and we will set our link to... Um, maybe we'll just do the blend spline again. And this one we'll switch to direct. Okay, so it cleaned up our toolpath a little bit now. But now, when I switch it over to direct, you'll see we have some toolpath actually going through the part right now. Um, so we're basically gouging out our part, and which is we definitely don't want to be doing that. Um, but we also don't want to be wasting the time coming up in Z, moving over, coming back down, getting back into the part. Um, so what we can do to fix that is come over to our gouge check here, 
and turn on our gouge check. Um, now, a lot of different options in your gouge check. Um, there is more with the full, but right now we just have uh, retract tool and trim and relink tool path. But um, you guys can have multiple different gouges set up. So what I'm going to actually do, and this is, it, it's not a rule of thumb, it's just something that I like to do, um, is I like to keep my gouges separate. So what I'm telling it to do right now is to check the gouge against the, the tool shaft, the tool tip on the drive surface, which is the surface that we're cutting. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my gouge 2, turn that on, and I'm going to uncheck my drive surfaces, and I'm going to do a check surfaces. Basically, check surfaces is telling it to stay. I don't want the tool to touch this area. So if I come in here, let's see. I'm going to pick that inside boundary, so I, I'm telling it that I don't want it to touch any of that inside uh, cavity area. Hit the green check mark, and let me just kind of get this part so you guys can see it over here. Come on. And let's update our tool path. And now you'll see it completely avoids touching any of those walls in there, uh, keeping the gouge away. So another nice feature in here, but I'm still not a fan of this toolpath. Um, we have a lot of wasted feed and moves going on right here. Um, normally with full HSS, I would tell it to do a rapid in here, but I don't have that option. So what I'm going to actually do here is I'm going to switch around my toolpath. Um, so if I go to my geometry page and change it to 90 degrees defined by angle, Look how much cleaner that toolpath just looks now. Um, so we're not doing a lot of wasted time going this way, and we're we're 90 degrees to what we started with here, working our way back and forth. And since we're not doing those up down movements inside that cavity, avoiding that inside, we're going to have our machine's going to be running a lot smoother also. So, and if we zoom into our links, you'll see we're doing a nice blend in there. Um, and like I said before, if we want, we can, you know, extend those out by coming over to your toolpath parameters, click on the modify, and do your extend trim out. Um, and that will extend the pass. But right now, if I go to my tool axis control, it's calculating the toolpath based off of the, the tool contact point. So what it's set to right now is since we're doing zigzag, it's going to be automatic. So it might switch from, you know, the tip to the center, back to the tip, to the nose, to the front. But if you guys want, you guys can set that up. Um, you know, maybe you just want to work off the center only of the cutter and not the outside edge or the front edge. Um, so you guys do have that option there. Now, if you guys want to go a little bit farther one way or the other way, um, you can also set it up right here. You can kind of see the what the picture is showing you guys here of what's going on too. But um, let's go ahead and take a look at that toolpath here and see what she looks like. So it's like it didn't even see that center cavity being hollowed out. So um, for those of you guys that might have, um, in the, back in the day, you might have had to create a, a filler in uh, filler surface in there so it didn't see it. Um, now the option is there to basically completely skip over that. Um, like it, it wasn't even there at all. So real nice um, for that feature. So now let's go ahead and cavity out our center. Now what I want to do is let me get a straight down shot of this. You'll see that our cavity is actually has tapered walls all the way around the outside edge here. And that's where we're going to get over to the constant Z machining and, uh, you know, picking, you know, your step downs and uh, your scallops and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to do a simple 2D eye machining here. Actually, I already grabbed that. So let me just hit the drop down. There we go. And I'm going to grab that flat end mill. Tell it to go to that depth. 
and let's whiz bang this baby out. Turn on turbo. Oh, and let me put my floor to zero because I want to bring it right down to the floor. Okay, so we I machine that that cavity out right there. So now we can start working on the tapered walls and the the uh, the bottom fillet there. So what we're going to do is add another HSS, and we're going to switch it over to our constant Z now. And the constant Z is kind of is more uh, set up to do the, I guess, more vertical walls. I guess you could say um, it works much better. And you you guys will be able to tell. I mean, if we just click on geometry real quick. Actually, instead of having to select through it all, I selected these already for you guys. Just got to find it. There we go. And now, um, once you pick your tool, if you just do a saving calculate, you'll be able to see the the path of where it's going. So I want to be able to go you know, around in circles, working its way down. So this is the path that I'm looking for. Now, if we had it on linear, kind of more set up to do the flat surfaces, you'll see our tool path is just not looking what we what we want. We're not going to get a good finish on there, um, and it's you know definitely not set up for this uh, this part. And that's why when we click it onto linear, it kind of shows a more flat uh, surface here, kind of like what we we're working on over here, versus uh, constant Z. We're working on a more vertical wall. So okay. So let's start fine-tuning our tool path here. Um, so what I'm going to do is come to my tool path parameters. And let's say we want a, you know, a decent finish. So let's do 10th all. And all our red moves. Um, so let's try to eliminate those as much as possible. Um, we're not going to get rid of all of them just because we don't have all the options at our fingertips right now. But uh, so I'm gonna switch this over to direct, and I'm gonna switch this over to the blind or the blend spline. And now what I'm gonna do is let's save and calculate, see where we're we're going here. Um, we are violating some areas right here just by looking at the the tool path. I don't even have to solid verify it to see that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it over, turn on my gouge. And we want to turn on the drive surface right here. And now I'm going to turn on the check surfaces. And basically, I tell it that I don't want it to touch, you know, any of the other of those, of those surfaces. So I don't want to touch that um, or that. So I'm telling it I don't want it to touch anything in here, and I don't want it to touch the floor. Now, let's go ahead and do a save and calculate here. And now we can see that we're not, let me just do a simulate here. And since we're working on that tapered wall, I did the eye machining out to a certain spot. Um, but you'll see we're taking one heck of a load on that cutter coming down. We actually have uh, the little islands hanging up there. So what I'm going to do here, once it's finished up, All right, so obviously that's way too much of a cut, especially if we're cutting, you know, anything other than, the, you know, foam or wood. Um, so what I want to do is now um, come over to my multi-passes. So under, let's see, roughing and more, you have the multi-passes. You can see here's are some of the options that you guys would have if you guys had the, the full version, um, and I would actually be doing the, uh, the depth cuts right here, so, but we can get by using the multi-pass. And multi-pass is, you know, setting up basically kind of what it says, multiple passes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to take two passes, and I'm going to set the spacing by 0.1, hit OK. Now, let's go ahead and do a simulate here, and we do get some uh, you know, retracts in there, but like I said, uh, with Express, I can't uh, 
can't get it out. So um, go to a solid verify here. And what it's doing now is it's doing the roughing and kind of the finishing all in one. Um, I, I'd rather do the roughing go down and then come back and start finishing. So uh, easy enough, I can just come into my multi-passes here and sort by, and instead of doing slices, I'm gonna do sort by passes. So basically what it's gonna do now is it's gonna rough it out. It's gonna do the roughing pass first keeping away basically that, that 100 thou, and then it's gonna step over that 100 thou that I told it to do and you know start moving in the material. Now we're still taking a pretty healthy cut here, so you know maybe I want to you know extend it out um, you know six passes um, or you know obviously come in there with a rougher. In HSS there is some roughing options in there, but since we're working with Express here, we don't have a lot of options. Um, so this is another way of just kind of getting around it just to get the, the job done, I guess you could say. And like I said, definitely not the most proficient, um, but we'll get it to work. Yeah, you know, and Kevin, that's, a, that's actually another really good point is, um, you know, you, you can really see kind of the, the stark difference really between uh, HSS Express and the full version of HSS, um, there are a lot more automation tools uh, as well with the full version of HSS, and um, you know you can, you can pretty much see that here as, as Kevin's going through those tool paths. There, there's some you know kind of some extra steps that you have to go through with Express. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, so it's it's just kind of uh, it's worthy to to just note that between the two systems. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, I'm not trying to sh short sell Express here, but it is going to take a little bit no, more no. of uh, programming time on your guys' part. It's probably going to take a little bit more cycle time. And that's why we kind of we give you a little teaser of, of, of what you're missing out on, what the <laughs> if the grass is greener on the other side kind of situation. So, <laughs> um, but. Uh, do we have any questions on this part right here? Um, Clarence, did that kind of answer your question with the uh, constant Z machining? Yeah, I think, it, uh, I think that definitely did speak to that question, Kevin, for sure. Okay, perfect. Do we have any other questions so far on this part here? Um, there is so much in here, I know I'm kind of grazing over some of it. Maybe I should just kind of go through and uh, tell you what every little option does. So I kind of went over this, this page right here, keep it to a, a, a boundary, uh, you know, full and avoid exact cuts. Um, tool is pretty standard. You know, tool page is gonna look the same in any operation. So, you know, you describe your tool, you have your, your feed rates, uh, coolant, all that stuff. Levels, a page that you're not gonna touch a lot with HSS, um, let's just start getting into the four and five axis here. Excuse me, but um, you know you do have your retract distance, you do have your safety distance here, uh, exit safety distance. Um, in the advanced tab, you can do arc lifts up to the clearance level. You can do retract uh, distance, all that stuff. So there, there's a lot here. Um, now in the toolpath parameters, if you guys want, you guys can actually turn off the advanced. Um, it's gonna, it's it's just gonna show you just the the standard stuff in there. Um, for the, the nerd I am, I like to see every little option in there. So um, surface quality, you know, how tight a tolerance we want to go there. Your maximum step over or your scallop height set right there. Sorting, basically, do you want your tool to go one way, zigzag, spiral? Um, just what, what do you want to do with the tool path? Um, your, your cut order, all that stuff. Um, like, shoot, I mean, can't even show you all the cart orders here. Um, same thing with machine by lanes. Now, um, with full HSS, if you guys have broken up pieces, so let's say you have you know a surface over here and a surface over here, instead of going back and forth across this huge gap right here, what you can do is set by a machine, instead of doing lanes, if you guys have full HSS, you can do uh, regions, and so it will just stay to the specific region. Uh, flipping the direction of your uh, cutting uh, direction, I guess you'd say. Um, so if you want to start from the top going down to the bottom, or if you want to start from the bottom going up to the top, this is where you want to, to uh, uh, change the direction. So now, uh, start point, you know, maybe you want a specific area where you want it to start. 
uh, this is where you can specify that. Now, if we go to tool axis control, um, you can do actual shift uh, for each contour, for all cuts, um, you know, kind of switching these up here, you can kind of see what's going on, you know, adding or taking away from each one here by doing a plus or minus uh, in there. Um, uh, kind of offsetting the tool, almost like a, um, a surface offset. So that's one way to do it. Now, I kind of went through the contact, so maybe you guys just want to use the center of the cutter and the center only, so the toolpath will be calculated off that. Or maybe you just want to stay on the radius of that ball end mill or the bull nose end mill. Um, now, obviously, if you guys are using a flat end mill, it's going to be set to the center anyways. Um, so, Or you can actually set it on front with the flat too. But you know, maybe you just want to work on the front flat area on the bull end mill. Um, or you can actually set up to where, you know, what side of the cutter, what shift you want on there and to specify a specific area. Um, now with HSS, HSS is the only software that you can actually do undercuts on a 3D surface. So you can't actually do undercuts with HSM. Uh, HSS is the only one if we had an undercut here and you guys wanted to use like a, a lollipop cutter or a like a, a T-slot cutter with a full radius all the way around. Um, HSS is the only one that will adapt for that. So Now the links area, a um, lot in here. Uh, you can do, you know, your first initial entry coming in, so basically coming in right here, you can actually have a lead in and lead out. Um, same thing with exit. Now for each tool path, you can also set lead in and lead outs for each time it's kind of coming out of the material and coming back into the material, which is set up right here. Uh, and to clean up those passes, you know, you can do, um, you know, direct, clearance, uh, incremental, and like I said, with full, you a lot of uh, options here. And you can also set up, you know, your, your percentage of the tool. So maybe you want to kind of keep everything as much as possible in a, you know, the, your gaps along cuts, maybe you want to keep it at, you know, 100% and down here down to 200%. Um, definitely you can play with these values and you'll actually clean up your tool path a little bit better here. So, and like I said, you have lead in lead outs for each one of those. So if you're doing a small move, you can actually have a lead in, but if you have a large move, you can turn off the lead in and lead out. Now with the default lead in lead out, you can switch it up right here. Um, a lot of times you guys aren't going to touch this page because um, you can switch your lead and lead outs under your link, but this is just kind of the default area. Um, the gouge check, lots going on in here. Um, you guys can set it up to um, maybe you want to gouge against your holder. You want to do gouge check against your, your arbor. It's, it's full crash detection, um, so it's not going to if you have a, let's take this to the extreme here, and this taper is a really uh, sharp taper, but as that cutter gets down to the bottom, we're worrying about um, you know, hitting the tool holder or whatnot, and it's actually going to move that cutter away to adapt for that tool holder um, if it's turned on. Um, and you have a lot of different options on your tool axis control here. So um, basically, you know, when, it, when it hits a gouge, where do you want it to go? So I told it just to stay along the tool axis. Um, maybe, maybe you want it to shoot straight up in Z. Um, so a lot of different options here. Or what you can do is do a trim and relink. And you'll see it kind of just it stops it and then it relinks the tool path. So um, like I said, there's, there's so many options in here for you guys to really fine tune those 3D surfaces. And you can add up to four gouges in here. So like said I like to do my um, you know my drive for my first gouge right here and I like to do my check for my second you can do them all in one but I, I like to separate them out so I, you know it gives it kind of night and day so maybe when I'm doing my check surface I want to do the retract tool but against my drive I want to keep trim and relink my tool path so that's different ways of just using it there clearance data the, uh, yep go ahead Oops. Okay, sorry, Kevin. I just wanted to let you know um, there was a question here um, 
that said, would 3DI machining be the best way to, to prep the surfaces before using HSS? And, oh, and I know I know you're right. Yeah. yeah, I know you're right in the middle of this, but maybe maybe you know, kind of you might want to address that when you're when you're. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 3D I machine is the 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 premier way of getting um, roughing out this this part right here, um, getting rid of all this material, even the taper down in there. Uh, with 3D I machining, it's going to leave really nice uh, scallop heights for you guys to come back with HSS to finish it. I'm just kind of showing you guys what you guys can actually do. If you guys don't have the 3D iron machining um, or you don't have HSM, you guys can get the job done. Um, so like I said, it's not going to be the most efficient roughing it out, but we are taking multiple passes down in here. But, uh, you know, I think uh, William came up with the question, you know, is 3D the ideal way to prep for this? And I, absolutely. I, I Without a, a doubt in my mind, this is it's the best way to do it. So, um, just trying to get the job done because if you'll look right here, if I come to my operations, I don't have 3D I machining. I can't turn it on because I I've limited my license, so you guys can kind of see what HSS Express would look like. So, um, yeah, and you know, and, and Kevin, that's a that's a great. You know, I'm really glad you did that because you know this is a, a, a real representation of of what somebody with uh, you know, HSS Express would would get, or what would they would see in their in their menu structure. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, I appreciate you walking through you know each and every one of those because you know again it really just contrasts the difference between the two packages. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, do we have any other questions on this particular part at all? I think that was the uh, the only one we had so far, Kevin. Perfect. Okay. So let's get on to a little bit even, I guess, really say more complex part, but um, let's see. Let's do solid cam and go to my recent parts. The good old goggles. Um, now, the question that got just got brought up with the, the 3D eye machining. Let me see if I can just find it real quick. Uh, we actually did a movie or a quick little clip on here, machining, roughing out these goggles. Um, let's go under the eye machining and cutting videos. Um, there it is. So the question, um, and the last question is, you know, for 3D eye machine. Let me just kind of breeze through this part here. Um, this is uh, basically 1018 material here, and hopefully it's playing through pretty smooth for you guys. But um, basically, just kind of roughing this out, and um, you know, it was basically all we had to do is just tell it what tool we wanted to use, and it and it roughed it out. So you'll see we have nice even. Um, you know, cuss pipes all the way around here and, you know, roughing it out till the finest. And then this is a perfect example. You come back with your HSS and uh, finish this off. So I just kind of want to show that to you guys real quick here. I guess the goggles are a little bit different. These are like the uh, the old nerdy glasses you had to wear in, uh, in science class in the lab class, right, Brennan? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll do HSS here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do constant Z first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the, the more vertical walls here, uh, doing these. And you'll notice if I do a straight down shot, you'll actually see um, it's actually tapered out. So another great spot to use that uh, constant Z. Now, for you guys that don't know, if you guys have multiple geometries and stuff like that and you want to repick something that was used before, uh, you guys can actually hit the little, instead of hitting the little drop down trying to guess on what it is, if you guys hit the little browse button right here, you can actually just go through and click and see, you know, what you're actually looking for. So um, it highlights everything in purple, um, you know, uh, of what's being picked there. So uh, save you a little bit of time in the long run. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and grab that 3 8 inch ball and mill here. And like I said, I'm going to leave my levels alone. And toolpath parameters, let's put that at 10th all. 
And we'll leave our tool axis control alone here. And let's just see what it looks like. And this is the best way I can explain it to you guys for the guys that don't use HSS on a daily basis, is get your tool path just laid down. See what you have to deal with first. Then what you can come back do and you can come up and clean up um, these areas right here. So let's try to get rid of some of our links here. So what I'm gonna do is do uh, my link to direct right here. And this one I'm actually gonna do a safety distance and rapid. So you'll see definitely cleaned up a lot of our red lines um, that were kind of going on there. But you know, normally if we had full HSS, we'd be able to eliminate all these. And what I would actually do is I would set my tool path parameters to uh, doing a spiral. So basically just start at the top and just doing a nice corkscrew working its way down, getting a real nice finish. But um, like I said, we're, we don't have that option. Um, so we're, we're doing as best as we can here. And we have a pretty full 3D part here by just using the two and a half D standard here. So, um, so that kind of gives a good representation of cleaning up that outside wall there. So now what we want to do is get these, you know, round areas, this uneven uh, flat surface here. So um, let's just go ahead and exit out of here. And let's go ahead and do the another HSS. But this time we're going to do the linear path. So let's we'll put back to linear here. And grab that surface that I grabbed before. And the face one, there we go. Hit the green checkbox, grab that same cutter, and let's set up our toolpath parameters. How tight, you know, how, how pretty of a finish are you looking for? All right. So right here, um, another great example of, you know, we're trying to do a full 3D part with just two and a half D tools. Um, it's not our tool path, uh, you know, like me and Brendan have been saying, it's, it's not going to be the most proficient, um, but it's going to get the job done. So you'll see we have a lot of rapid moves here. Um, and I actually, I kind of went through earlier to try to clean this up as best I could, but there's really no way of cleaning this up really nice um, to, you know, eliminate a lot of these rapid moves just because, you know, we don't have a lot of those options, um, one, in our sorting and uh, two in our link section, because um, this one I would do follow along surface to eliminate all those uh, rapid moves, but I don't have that option here. But like I said, I mean, if we do a simulate here, it's gotta update the path here. And this one hasn't been roughed out, so. Yeah, Kevin, as that's um, is that's kind of simulating there. We did have a kind of a comment, really, just to, uh, that basically says um, uh, maybe show some of the uh, the gouge checking options rather than just kind of talking about it. Sure. Um, I don't know how much. I mean, I know we're we're kind of coming right up uh, to the top of the hour here, so yeah, you um, I'm not sure how much time that that would that's, take. Actually, I just when I was playing this toolpath through, through here, I noticed I did have a gouge. Uh, which is another great reason to, uh, you know, make sure um, to definitely verify your uh, your toolpath in solid verify here. Um, I'm just trying to see if it was this one that we had the gouge on. I think it was. So let me just pause this. Let's go over to the gouge check, and let me just kind of turn off everything here. And I'm going to turn on my gouge against my drive surfaces. And what I'm going to do is turn my gouge two on and do my check surfaces and the surfaces I don't want it to touch. So I'm going to, let's see, actually I'm go with this guy that I picked one in the center. I don't see one that I want all the way, so what I'm going to do is just click a new one here. I don't want it to touch any of these surfaces here. 
I don't want it to come up over the top, and I don't want it to touch anywhere on the inside. Now I'm going a little bit to the extreme here. You know, normally I wouldn't have to worry about coming in here, but I just kind of give you guys a good example. So basically, I'm telling it to um, only work on the drive surface that I picked. Save and calculate. Now we're actually, we're not gouging along that part. Um, so you'll see that one, I don't know if you guys have seen in the solid verify before, but it was actually doing a straight shot over here. And uh, now with my gouge turned on, it's coming up and over, kind of following that surface right there. Um, and let's take a look at the back. Yep, everything looks good back there. I don't see coming into anything there. So. Um, that's you know turning on the gouge right there, and let's come over to the other one. Let's turn off that toolpath here. Let's turn on our gouge for our drive, and turn on our gouge too for our check surfaces. And basically, I don't want it to touch. Well, instead of clicking all these, I know I already picked them. Let's see that one right there. So I don't want to touch any of those surfaces. And now we are 100% not gouging into our part. Um, now, if you want, you can also do, you know, stock to leave also uh, right here. So, you know, if you come across a gouge, it's going to leave a little bit of stock, you know, on there, and you can come back with a different style tool path too. So, um, no, uh, Dwayne just asked a question that do you have to use two gouge checks? No, um, what I was going to explain. Uh, earlier, Dwayne, you know, if you want to have been late, Dwayne, I could you could have, no, I'm kidding. Um, I, I like <laughs> to break mine up into different, two different gouges, and the only reason I like to do it in two different gouges is, one is for my drive, I can actually set a different strategy down here for my drive versus a different strategy down here for my check surfaces, so. <laughs> so. That, that's why I split up in two, but no, you don't have to. Um, you just get more options when you split your gouges up. So, like I said, I can uh, specify the toolpath. Just, you know, maybe this one I, I just want to do a trim and relink um, for my, when it comes up to a check surfaces or a surface that I don't want it to touch. So, that explain it good for you there, Dwayne? Yeah, okay. Do we have any other questions? Because I don't have any other parts to show. Um, definitely now's the time to, you know, pipe in and let me know. Um, Anthony, uh, did I kind of cover your gouge question, you know, instead of just saying it, kind of going through it for you, showing how it works? Yeah, I think, Kevin, I think that's... Uh yeah, it, he's asking actually, does it work? Uh, will it work for fixtures too? So will, will yeah, it gouge check against fixtures if you have yep. that on there? If you yep. have it in the screen. Yep. Yep. So what you'd want to do for your fixture is just turn on your check surfaces and, you know, and tell it, um, if we just do a show right uh, here. Let me get rid of my tool path here. If I do a show right here, um, you know, I'm telling it not to touch those surfaces, but if I had my Kurt Vice in here or whatever Vice, I would do a check surface against that too. Or, you know, maybe it's even, um, you know, a toe clamp that's sitting on over here, it will definitely completely avoid that um, every way possible. So it will definitely go against anything. Thank you, Cody. It's good having you. But, um, yeah, now uh, for those of you guys that are kind of new too also, um, Next week, let's see. Next week we 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 got to skip class. I got, I got the week off. I actually have to go help my brother-in-law farm. Um, but after that, we're actually going to kind of go on over some of the. I had a lot of interest in just showing each individual operation. So we'll be kind of covering everything that there is to know about face milling, making it more proficient for you guys. We'll cover everything just in profiling, kind of working our way down the list here. Toolbox cycles and. There's a ton of stuff in there for you guys to check out, and I want to go through that one with you guys. So I um, had a lot of suggestions on kind of going through this, so we're going to kind of, um, in a couple weeks here, we'll start at the top and just work our way down. So these are going to be our next class lineup 
Um, and then we'll get into the full HSS here. And then we'll get into uh, HSM and HSR and start again into the five axis and machine sim and mill turn and all the stuff that makes me have gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but also we have a great program. So, you know, I was telling you guys that, you know, um, if you guys are interested in different packages, definitely tell me you want the KevCam special. We also do the, uh, you know, tell a friend program. Um, usually you get a $50 Visa gift card. But this time we are, um, not this time, every time, if you just mention the KevCam special, you get a $100 Visa gift card. All you have to do is uh, tell your account manager, like Brendan, just give them a name and a phone number, and they sit in a demo, you get a $100 gift card, no questions asked. And then if they end up buying the software, you actually get 20% of that sale too. So real nice service um, and, uh, you know, real nice to, ha to have for you guys. So, um, and like I said, Every recording is uploaded onto YouTube um, with the parts now, and I'm, I'm falling a little bit behind here from uh, last night's or last week's on the the 3D million part. I haven't gotten that one up yet, but um, it will be up there real shortly uh, for you guys. So, and then tonight's video, if you guys want to review it, um, it will be up there about one o'clock in the morning uh, Central Time. And if you guys have any questions, definitely just shoot me an email. Um, I have my phone on me at all times, um, so I'm never away from my email. So definitely shoot an email over to me, guys. Um, even next week when I'm sitting in the tractor in the middle of Timbuktu, um, if you guys have questions, just definitely shoot me an email. So, Brendan, got anything quite to add? The, uh, that's quite the uh, the mental picture there, Kevin. We appreciate <laughs> that. <for> sure. <laughs> Plain Farmer John. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, yeah, I just wanted to. Um, Let's see. Oh, one quick question. Um, are the Kurt Weiss models available? Uh, I think you yeah. can get Kurt Weiss's uh, That's right see. from Kurt. Or Matt no, Weiss. actually, uh, if you guys go to 3D Content Central, um, let me put the link. Copy uh, oh, that's right. And let me put the link into the chat area. Um, right here, it's a website uh, supported by SolidWorks. Um, basically anything that you can think of, just type in right here and it will come up. So we can just say, uh, if I can type Kurt Weiss. And these were, this is where I get all my models to come on. So uh, we have a full, there's a bunch of Kurt Weisses in here for you guys. So if you guys want one with the handle, one without the handle, uh, maybe one without the guts, um, different jaws. So anything that you guys can think of, I even typed in here, uh, there's a Ford truck. I think it was Ford. They had a full, yeah, this is it. They had a, oh, that's a, a GT40, but they had a full, oh, here's a Mustang. You can actually get these models and have the full scale model sitting on your, on your uh, SolidWorks. It's all free. It's funny, it says it's an Escort, but it looks like a Mustang to me. But... So definitely come over to this website, and if you guys are looking for toe clamps, uh, fixture plates, skirt vices, chick vices, it's all in here for you guys. So definitely take advantage of that. So Todd, did you get that uh, link that I put in there? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So, but I think that about wraps it up. Um, thanks again, guys, for taking the time out of your night to listen to me ramble on. Um, hopefully I answered a lot of your questions and got you guys more uh, confident with using your HSS Express. Um, but like I said, if you guys run across questions, give us a call on the support line. Um, the number is 866-975-1115, extension 2, or definitely shoot me an email. Um, good, bad, negative positive, whatever feedback you have, shoot it over to me. Um, well, I'm doing my best to improve it. And, uh, you know, like I said, this is solely up to you guys uh, for training. So you guys just tell me what you guys want to see, and we'll, we'll, we'll go on topics for you guys. So, um, Okay. Well, sounds good. I, you know, uh, again, I echo Kevin's uh, sentiments. Thanks a lot. You know, it's, it's great to, uh, to see everybody coming out uh, this late to, you know, to see what we've got to talk about. So we certainly do appreciate it. And uh, like Kevin said, just uh, anything you need, give us a call. We'll, we're here to help. Absolutely, guys. All right. Have a wonderful night, guys. Talk to you soon.
Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.